All right, so thank you, Eric and Pam, for bringing up this uh, topic we've been talking about. I wish we had recorded more of it, but <laughs> well, at least I'll summarize it, and please, either of you can chime in, is that there seems to be some, maybe something in the air or uh, the stars are aligning, uh, speaking of astrology, mm -hmm. where um, some of us are, are finding this, this movement towards integrating more of our work. And maybe, maybe we're a little bit concerned whether a new integration of our work is going to confuse our audience, um, but we still have this calling to do it, this yearning to do it. And, um, you know, uh, and, and my, basic, my basic suggestion is <clears throat> if you have a concern that it might confuse your audience, then the content that you need to put out there with this new work or this new branch of your work that you're integrating now is to talk about why you are integrating this new branch. Why? So, so Eric brought up the example that, of course, Eric is known as a meditation teacher, um, spiritual teacher, hasn't publicly talked a lot about astrology or maybe a little bit. And now he's really having a good time wanting to integrate more of a deeper astrology into and then Eric, <laughs> please tell us, tell us more about that. Okay. Um, well, I think a lot of it comes from uh, the reticence to bring it in the public sector comes partially from the way that I have had a, 30 year career in a corporate space too. Ah, okay. Where, That's part of it. Where that was the two times I brought it up to clients, I lost those clients went away. And oh. actually one of them um, I it became a very public sort of controversy oh. in the in the city that I was consulting to. So I I sort of retracted and just used it for the inner circle. But the okay. now that I'm fully engaged in teaching as a, spiritually in an open way it seems disingenuous and out of integrity actually to not yes reveal the entire narrative and the under okay. you know yes because it's they go together the yes. practice of meditation and the understanding of the archetypal energies they right. go together yeah and right and so that's exactly what you're going to show that i hope you will put out there yeah. as an educational piece you know it could be instagram posts facebook posts youtube videos and it's probably not just going to be one it's going to be yeah. over time you'll you bring in this uh, you know not once again but it's like let me talk today about why and how i'm integrating astrology into the, the, the framework or whatever it may be or different aspects of it and and also i always i always like content also that is um, making the distinction between what you're doing and what the mainstream understanding or shallower understanding is. And this is especially relevant for astrology because astrology, you know, is in the tabloids or whatever. Maybe it's like, it's, yeah. it's like, it's like today's horoscope is, you know, blah, blah, blah. You will find love or <laughs> whatever, but you know, it's, you're, you're, yeah. So, so make con making content, making that distinction is going to be helpful as well. Um, That's what I noticed, George, actually, yeah. as I've been, tuning right. into my own sense of doing this is that yes as i've heard from you and others you know how to, this idea of being right. uh provocative or controversial or yes distinguishing yes. yes and that hasn't sort of i haven't really found a way to do that in the meditation conversation right not but in the astrology conversation i'm like on a soapbox you know yeah in my mind, but now I see there's a real value in stepping out on that soapbox because I, it's just quite a different approach, and yeah, yeah, exactly. And the distinguishing type of content, like yeah. hey, there's the mainstream or shallow view of something, and here's how I think of it, is helpful both for the mainstream or for people who yeah. who who kind of like your energy but have only known astrology from from the perspective of the shallow, the shallow part of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's also helpful for people who understand on a deeper level going, heck yes, somebody is finally saying this or somebody is so clearly saying this. So yeah. it's helpful for both, both audiences. Now, Pam, do you want to talk about your sort of integration and what you're, oh, and I go ahead and, and, and unmute, yes. Great. Isn't that working? I accidentally, sent my healing newsletter they both go out on wednesdays to my 
to the animal healing stuff and my writing stuff. Okay. And I accidentally sent the healing one to the writers. And then I realized it in the morning when I got, didn't get a notification for the writing one going through. And I'm like, what the hell did I do? Oh, criminy. So I apologized and sent it. And a, you know, a couple people signed up for the healing one and said, I didn't know you do that. Then signed up for a class and vice versa started to, some of the healing people signed up for the writing classes, which have nothing to do with animals, but they may soon. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So then I just started talking about, because I want, I've been wanting to not merge them. That's not, see, I don't really know what I mean yet, but, but what I know is that the, that the, that the, how they integrate is that they're both about listening. And that's going to sound so cheesy, no, but there no, is no. a deep listening. I do animal communication. I'm an animal communicator. A lot of people roll their eyes at that. That's okay. I don't care. And the other side is the writing. The you, side you, is the you writing. train people on the writing, yeah. So, but what I'm teaching them to do in writing is listen. Not to me. Listen. Mm. When you learn the craft, I mean, you have to learn basic craft. You can't just, you know, you need a container, yeah, yeah. right? You can't just sure, be sure. flying around with yeah. nothing. But then, like, when you have a draft, what I do as a developmental editor and why I'm good at it is because I know how to listen to the piece. Yeah, I don't yeah. care what the author's yammering in my head. No, you be yeah. quiet. Let me read your manuscript. Yes, yes. And, and I can see what the manuscript is trying to say. Right. And so I teach, that's what I teach people yes. in my workshops at higher levels, is how to listen to the work, which is you, but just listen to the work. Stop dragging it around by the plot or by, you see, stop yeah. manhandling it and just so there so i'm also a reiki master so that's i don't talk about that so much but it's but it's because people really roll their eyes but it's there it's in my teaching yeah. of the writing it's just shh, quiet i know what you think you want to do but what does your character want to do yeah yeah so i teach so, people so it's the same yeah, I, and when you listen to the animals it's the same thing it's not you gotta you have to learn yeah. i teach classes learn how to shut off your own and that's that's the that's the art is is shut off your own head and because you you listen from here, and so so yeah this, yeah it's it's, this it's right like you you are you are integrating a deep um, you could say it's a skill or a way of being from this other work into what people don't usually integrate into the writing or or mm -hmm. you know less spiritual work so called right. and. Um, and it's interesting you said people roll their eyes, but the, but the interesting thing is, I think your truest fans, your true fans for your writing probably won't roll their eyes. Oh no, they won't. At, at, at the Reiki <laughs> or animal communication. And but I, and thankfully we can define what our true fans are. <laughs> our true, you, you could define, you know, Pan, you could define my true fans are people who are open, who, who yes, want to work on their writing, but they're open also, if not passionately into uh, both the animal uh, communication stuff and the Reiki stuff, but yeah. So thank you for for sharing that. And and this is similar um, to my own story of integration, which is that when I had my spiritual kind of shift, 2012, 2013 area, um, and I like broke down my business and built it back up in 2014, I decided to start integrating more spiritual talk, and not surprisingly. Um, my, my true fans really came forward and go, wow, this is really good stuff that um, I don't see elsewhere. And that's what happens when we integrate. We become deeply unique. And yes, of course, I have some people rolling their eyes. I actually literally do remember at least one of my I own book editors, you know, somebody who was a who was a who was a fan following me and volunteered to book edit said, no, I don't like this idea about ministry and about, you know, this thing. That's OK. You know, we don't have to cater to all of our fans, but if we are willing to practice a little bit of courage and say my true fans will understand this. Um, and we're always testing, right? It's like, hey, let me let me try saying it this way, <clears throat> because sometimes your true fans need you to say it, say it, but in a different way. They want you to integrate, but you just have to test out integrating in different ways to see what works. So anyway, thank you for sharing those examples, and thank you also to uh, Liesl and Zuza here um, for adding to the conversation. And um, 
I just want to encourage everyone to be open to integrating all of you into your work. Can I say one more thing? Yes, because it, it really struck me, this uh, piece about saying it in a different way. Uh, for me, I'm integrating working in nature more than ever. And I, I used to have this kind of slightly disdainful attitude, like a oh, nature, nature, Mary Oliver, you know, everybody into birds and bees and like, give me a break because there is like a sentimental streak to it that I don't relate to actually. <clears throat> but um, when I, well, when I see nature as a, a manifestation of awareness, really that's way more accessible and way less complicated than people, you know, uh, that creates such a context for the work that it's like, and such a resource. I mean, especially during the pandemic, I started doing outdoor uh, workshops because there was nothing else to do and they were fabulous and everybody can relate. Like people who say, I'm not a mover, I don't know how to dance. I say, well, how about you move like the ocean? And they go, Pew. Like, okay, that's good. Right. Uh, people discover new ways yes. to be and also new ways to feel held. Wow. Especially through the aloneness of the pandemic. I just think I just created a piece of content. So I'm going to Yes, share yes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, what you said, right? I mean, whatever we are integrating can be said in different ways. And sometimes it's obvious to us how to say it in a way that connects deeply with our true fans. And sometimes maybe it's less obvious or we're passionate about saying in one way and it, it kind of lands flat or people go, huh? You know, and so try the different ways of saying the thing, the new thing you're integrating. Yeah. So thank you. And Lisa, I want to give you a chance also to talk about, because you have several areas of work too. Yes, George, it came up for me around about 2015 when I learned about strength. Before that, I'd been working with EFT for 10 yes. years and yes. EFT is about, oh, here's a problem. Let's, you know, get like delete the emotional dis uh, charge about that and then we can kind of move forward we don't always move forward but just the ridding ourselves of the emotional charge so there's always a problem that we work with and suddenly with the strings it was the complete opposite it was like what's already right with you what what's beautiful about you what ways w w please don't change that about yourself so it was like a huge mess in my mind for about a year it's like what do I do with these two now because it's almost completely opposite but now in fact this whole conversation is like I just formulated well both of them can help us to bring peace inside of ourselves which is my one of my biggest passions in life is how do we get to peace yeah. and if we have peace through EFT or we have peace through I can accept myself just the way I am yeah. we come to this place of peace so thank you for this conversation it has That's helped great. me to explain it's it, it for me it makes your framework more comprehensive and whole it's mm. kind of like that it's kind of like two sides and it's like both and allows you to find the equanimity in the center yes. and so it's like the yeah so it's, uh, it's yes great. thank you for and the thing that you said earlier also was it makes you more unique because i know no other eft practitioner who also brings in strengths work and i don't know the other way around but it's it's literally makes it completely unique. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you.